Group Head of Corporate Communications Reliance Industry Limited. I had requested him to talk about using social uh, impact as a PR tool. And uh, Mr. Bansal will be giving his point of view as a representative both of RIL and as uh, his very robust career, uh, the kind of anecdotes that he can share. Over to you. Uh, Suparna, uh, is uh, somebody going to come and moderate the question answers or what's the plan? Okay. If I look uh, overawed or disheveled, it is true that I am. I have never had the opportunity to speak to so many PR professionals at the top of their game and then simultaneously claim to deliver an address or something like what Suparna and Anurag Batra uh, talked me into. So. I also know that some of you here in this room uh, are, are far more uh, experienced in uh, PR than I have been. I have had a very short uh, career in PR. It's less than three, three and a half years that Reliance Industries Limited, which is known to be a company of great courage and entrepreneurship ability, one of the minor examples of that is that I am standing here in my first PR job uh, with just three and a half years behind me. So uh, I just want to put this in context and should you want to apportion the, the blame on someone, I have named those two people. So you, after my talk, can always get after them. I think one of the critical advantages of uh, uh, coming from a cross-functional background, uh, some of it from the print media, within the print media, from the financial media, where I worked for the Financial Express under the jury chair who mercifully isn't here. Otherwise, I would be even more tongue-tied because I have reported to him as his resident editor. Uh, in television and in Hindi television at that, in radio where you have to speak a lot faster than you might in television and as well in, uh, in, in, the, in the big bad world of consultancy which I attempted after some serious illusions after my AMP I found that I was lousy in billing whatever bills I raised nobody paid so that also helped me understand what I can't do which is to raise bills. I, I was pretty good in showing up on boards, giving uh, gratis advice. So I became like the pro bono champion of my life, which of course changed after I onboarded this courageous and entrepreneurial company rolled into one, and I now stand as an intrapreneur. So let me tell you a story. Uh, ten, uh, 10 quarters back, we were a very shy company. We thought if you got, you got the numbers, you processed more crude than anyone else on the planet, you got GRMs, gross refining margins, 40, 50, 60 percent higher than the Singapore average, you were good. But all of a sudden, with the onslaught of a lot of political temperature, uh, in a kind of outpouring towards RIL, we thought that that's not good enough. And about 10 or 11 quarters back, we started speaking. And what did we do? May be of some relevance at the back of the hall. Whichever you know, company or consulting or client you represent, because we went cross-functional. Here's how. When we went for the acquisition of a media uh, set, of, set of media channels, one of the questions which everybody asked me was whether we will be showing up on that channel or those clutch of channels regularly and in a way becoming you know, a plug point for RIL. 
And I wasn't prepared for that question, but I knew it would be tweeted and spoken about. So I just said, I promise you ladies, the four pretty ladies, erudite ladies, scholastic ladies who run some of the best financial news programs, I dare say, on, on television, that I will never put my top guys on your channel. I will just send you what I send everybody else. Ab kehe to diya, karna bhi tha. I couldn't have just said it and then tomorrow morning, ye hamara ek release hai, madam, zara isko chaap dije ya usko broadcast kar dije. So some of us, you know, got together and we said, aisa karte hain. We will put the quarterly report of our CFO, who is considered the top dog in the finance world, in this part of the world at least, if not the entire world, we'll put him on air. Now, the option was to put him into different studios and then there is always a fight who is going to be the first one to receive him and then the second one isn't even interested and those sorts of things. And Bombay traffic isn't, as I discovered, having been new to Bombay, isn't going to work out at all. The other option was to ask everybody to come in and have a lot of outdoor broadcast OB vans uh, parked outside Maker 4, draw those huge wires and have all of us tripping over it while, you know, this CFO uh, is speaking. A slightly uh, offbeat advantage, uh, can I have a sip of water somewhere? They removed everything, it's like Gurgaon, I'm in Gurgaon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I told you I'm nervous. So then, uh, you know, coming back to my CFO story and how that represents to my mind some cross-functionality, some disruption, hopefully, is that we just had him speak after our quarterly earnings uh, extempore for about 15 minutes. Now that commentary, obviously, we use traditional PR tools like sending alerts in advance, the YouTube link in advance, uh, where one could tap, have a certain countdown happening, all the regular stuff which you guys do. But fundamentally, there was a big novelty. Okay, Reliance Bolega. You know, Reliance is going to speak, CFO is going to speak, and of course, we have a lot of screens in the communications department uh, where it was a pleasure. I can just share with you on a personal note, it was terrific to see ET Now suddenly breaking live into our YouTube feed, followed by Bloomberg, followed by NDTV Profit, followed by Z Business. Yes, CNBC Awaz and CNBC as well. So. You know, if you have compelling content, uh, you don't need to go to different channels, we felt. If you are able to create the necessary ecosystem, uh, you have something very pithy to say. All the analysts who were sitting and analyzing Reliance would carefully hear what the CFO said in that uh, YouTube cast. Uh, we weren't preferential to anybody, so we didn't lose any popularity votes. And I was happy that uh, some of the journalists from the channels who had initially ambushed me said, ye kya baat hui? Hamare kyo nahi pehle diya? And that also uh, is something that we have ensured that we never do that. If we send something, we send it to everybody at the same time. But what is happening, therefore? The tweets go on the same hashtag. There is a summary that is available beforehand. And there's a 25 to 30 page press release to back it. It's really nearly impossible for journalists to understand 25 and 30 pages of, of a press release in a few seconds. And they just pick up some stuff which is their area. Now, is, is there a lesson in some of this? Is there a lesson central to disruption that is happening in the lives of key stakeholders? Is there a deconstruction we can do of who is our consumer as PR professionals? I think 
you might want to educate me offline when we meet later. But the lessons for us were that you don't need to get into a Tutu Meme match and you can still make a point. Amy, Tutu Meme is U U I I. I don't know the English of Tutu Meme. <laughs> Where people kind of spar. You don't need to get into that because this was simply stated a point of view on the various businesses, retail, pet cams, GRMs, what sort of crude and, you know, the larger situation in the world, all of it. And there were people who were able to see exactly what they wanted out of it in a discoverable mode uh, through YouTube. Next quarter, we coupled the API because the APIs had become smarter. With the same ca camera angle, you could also have Facebook. And the next quarter, with Periscope, integrating to Twitter, ultimately. So we were assured that at least, at least some of our friends and uh, people who are really fond of us said this is the first time a large company of any consequence has been able to integrate three social media feeds and make its point uh, unadulterated. And that went not just to the six uh, channels that I named. It's gone to 700 news channels that exist in this country. How many of us in PR even have the names and the telephone numbers and the email IDs of some of these channels? But they felt respected. They felt there is an equal and level playing field. That helped a lot. That helped a lot. How that panned in in a cross-functional, uh, perhaps even disruptive, at least by our standards way, was that when the chairman, Mr. Mukesh Ambani, uh, announced the launch of the geo service and the disruptive free voice, free roaming, and finally just pay for data uh, thing in September of 2016. He agreed to do this parallel plugin to, to what he was about to say at an auditorium called Birla Matoshri in Bombay. I think. If I remember correctly, with a moment's exaggeration, you'll permit me, 52 outdoor broadcast vans lined up in the narrow street leading up to Birla Matoshri. But I think the ability of uh, social media and the platform of the internet was extremely useful and allowed people who are my key customers which is essentially the media, whether we say public relations, a large part of it, I confess, is still media relations, mainstream media relations, earned media. It helped to create that echo, echo chamber because all these numbers were measurable and of course the channel numbers are through sampling, so you again try and see where you stand and therefore you have a base and then you can see what it can do later. Now, with the kind of uh, Facebook presence we have, not much by, uh, I think, by way of our ambition, but we have about 2.4 million followers. We have uh, a few uh, uh, other pages like Foundation, etc., Reliance Foundation, uh, the sports, the Mumbai Indians is, of course, bigger than all of us put together. Uh, all of it, to my mind, leads us to uh, sharing the social story, which Suparna is keen to talk about. The social story isn't possible until you have developed independent uh, platforms, which are customer-oriented. Uh, it helps to get data from some of our media uh, friends who say that most of us what we intuitively know anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that most of us are getting information we need not from our desktops, but from this, this device, right? So our information has to be there for, even if it is a, a corporate announcement, if it is some, some boast, or if it is some video of a simple farmer who is getting a better yield from uh, a Reliance Foundation initiative, which you might want to know is the largest, uh, single largest uh, philanthropic uh, 
thing for uh, in the country about I think 700 crore were spent last year and uh, there's a commitment to uh, keep this up way beyond the social uh, uh, impact uh, or the CSR limits that have been prescribed for this 2% rule. So within that, the ability to uh, harmonize and to share video to bring out uh, people on the, uh, the actually cutting edge of the social uh, conversation uh, by way of case studies, by way of what they see and then know it is worth it, worthwhile enough to put on the uh, flame of truth uh, uh, you know, Twitter handle or on the uh, foundation's website or on the hospital's uh, you know, uh, Facebook page is, is able to talk to each other only when the platforms are, are actually uh, growing and interoperable. And I dare say even customer centric. And why I bring the customer here is that my sense is that the media person today is quite different than the ones which pros like Deepak here and there's so many of you who's, you know, uh, who have been on the discussion table with me in a variety of ways, uh, including uh, Deepak's uh, two press releases on Coca-Cola and so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah. So I would say that the journalist has significantly adapted to the new rules of the game. And we in the PR community, uh, if we think of the citizen and the activist, we should first start with the people who we know very well. And their needs have changed a lot. Look, let me just illustrate. Many of us, I won't embarrass by a show of hands, because that includes some of Reliance's press releases, we still use PDF. We just send it on PDF. We think that every uh, journalist has the ability to convert it into a word file. You know? The truth is that even if they do, should they? Should they even bother? You can always send a word version is also attached for your enhanced convenience or whatever you want to say, right? But do we? Do we send pictures in files that are acceptable by the servers of some of these news organizations? Even the alerts for the CFO story I started with go to shifts in charge two days in advance every eight hours with an apology that's sorry for the multiple uh, email blasts, but maybe you wouldn't have noticed in the previous shift, and there it, there it is. The advantage of this at the micro level is that individual stories of how, for instance, the GeoMyFi has helped people uh, you know, share their story of what it means to see Bahubali while on the way to Tadoba Tiger Reserve, uh, 20 kilometers away, away from Chandrapur in nowhere. Uh, that sort of story will come only when people see that there is a lot of traction that is happening. And as for journalists, you know, the uh, number of influencers they have is far more than their boss and the media uh, and the PR person. They are listening to each other all the time. Therefore, it may be useful to understand that if they see a company's handle following them, they feel respected. And the amount of inordinate, in fact, amount of time and energy we give to who follows us, who we follow, who has tweeted us, who has liked our thing, is far exceeding the actual outcome of any of this tweeting business. But I think that uh, let's go inside the mind of some of our key stakeholders, and in this case, the journalist. So they are using mobile phone more often than not distracted. They are constantly trying to juggle with many other stories than our, say, our own. And even during the day, the Reliance uh, results are there. For us, it's like uh, a great big mahakumbh of ideas, and we think there's no other story. But uh, the sad and the factual and the truthful part is that the day is full of stories. And that day in particular is often full of stories. So therefore, it is always useful to uh, to send the stuff in ways they can use and create conversations 
that are far beyond the overserved customers or clients. There is a whole volume of uh, folks who are underserved. So, management 101, PR 101, all the things we've learned all these years in different sectors we've been. I think there is a, a, a truth and a slightly bitter one in what was said about war is too important to be left to the generals. I would suspect you can fill in the blanks and change what is too important to be left to people of which profession. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benson. We'll uh, um, request you to please stay back. Is, um, we'll throw the, open, the floor open for some questions in case there are. Request you to please raise your hand and we'll... Well, he's right here. So you, you mentioned... Uh, Can you name yourself and please imagine there is... I'm blinded. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, listening to a conglomerate is very edifying. It's much easier to work for a company, however large it is, if it's got a co-competent or a, or a very specific industry that it's working in. I worked long years in Nestle. My name is Bohidar, and I set up the communication department in Nestle. But then I've been following Reliance... Uh, for many years that I was in the Times before the Nestle. What I liked best about uh, the whole idea of how to actually address these large number of segments of people once you're a conglomerate as large as you are. But I'll bring the question down to a small, very specific one. Would you give us a little bit about your observer research initiative that you have on Rouse Avenue? I think it's funded by Reliance. And second, why would you not change your picture to color? Because, I mean, you, you sound like a reasonably good communication man with a lot of color. Why such a stern black and white picture? Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so the second question is a serious one. Yes. Let me ask. Yeah, you could take that offline if you want. <laughs> no, it's okay. We are big boys. We can take it. Yep. But uh, suffice to say that um, that's the first picture which came to my mind and my EA was kind enough to send it and it was too late after that. But I assure you I will get myself re-photographed and I also assure you it wasn't taken 10 years back as is the case with most people. So uh, as regards uh, the first question, uh, well, to my mind uh, it's always very challenging to be in very many uh, different businesses. but. Suffice to say, and the chairman has gone on record to explain it, there is a, uh, there is a materials business, which is essentially uh, pet cams and hydrocarbons and uh, all the rest of it, and then uh, coal bed methane, etc. And then there is a customer facing business, consumer facing. And there comes, of course, a lot of uh, uh, question marks until last year whether Reliance is up to it to actually face consumers by the millions and today we have I think more than 150 million uh, customers with about with, with about uh, three and a half thousand uh, retail stores and so on and so forth and the data being consumed by on geo alone is about 70 percent of what is consumed in the entire landmass of India and larger uh, than the entire cumulative uh, data in uh, in the, in, the, in the United States. So there is an inversion that's happened. Uh, millions of Indians have reposed their trust in data and 2300 megahertz and voice over uh, long-term evolution. So in a word, I think it's several companies coexisting, but what I tried and attempted is the, the thread that can weave some of this together and ultimately lead us to the social uh, social part of the communication. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Bansal. Um, and of course, you made the point that media relations is primarily what it is. So I guess IR RIL is on the right move, invested in a lot of media. <laughs> I guess. So obviously, Supernaji, you were not listening when I said <laughs> that we send our statements to our media yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, friends. Yeah. Uh, 
without any, I mean, we are net neutral yes. in that sense. I did, I did. <laughs> Thank you so much, a TEDx speaker. Of course, a very long journey through the media itself. And now the group comes head for Reliance Industry Limited. May I request Ms. Archana Pandit to please come up on stage and offer it. Uh, Archana Jain, what am I saying? <laughs> PR Pandit, Archana Jain, to please come up on stage and offer a token of appreciation on behalf of the Exchange for Media Group. Yes, with a loud round of applause, please, and go ahead, tweet using hashtag IPRCCA. And immediately, we're moving into our next session.